Oh yeah, shout out to James Jamerson for killing the bass on every fucking song. He's a legend. I can't believe I didn't know his name. That's a cool name. Well, you're never going to forget it now. Yeah, right? it's also, yeah, it's a dope name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the name, like, if you were making up a bass player. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. What would you call him? What's up, guys? It's Sight After Dark. I'm Sifa Graffiti. I'm Dan Berg. Hey, so we're here on our album wrap-up. We did What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. We went through all the tracks. Uh, thank you guys for suggesting it, and thank you guys for listening to our reactions to it. So, um, pretty much a real heavy album around a real heavy time in history. Um, every single track kind of like emulates like a vibe of that era. And um, we were definitely taken through like all of the emotions and stuff. And um, what's your favorite track? I would say my favorite is Flying High in the Friendly Sky because it's very personal. Like the other songs is more, you know, kind of pulled out, like more of like society yeah. versus like him personally. Yeah. But in that song, you just really feel everything that he's saying. Yeah. And in the original video, I want to clear this up. Some of our older viewers might have seen the old video where I compared this to Kid Cudi and they might be like, how dare you, blah, blah, blah. I just want you guys to know that you should listen to him if you haven't, but it makes me feel the same way. And it's like a compliment for me to say that about any artist. So like it's, it's all meant in respect. Um, what was your favorite? Inner City Blues. I really like that one. I mean, it's got a groove. Um, I can dance to it. I like what he's saying, and I like how he's going along the rhythm. I like his overlays of um, harmony with himself and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Sure. Yeah, and it, it definitely feels it's uh, kind of like two or three people in the song doing three different things vocally. Like, the one that's telling you exactly what's going on, the one that's just going da 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 and humming by himself, and then the other ones that's doing the bass hum. Yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah. Oh yeah, shout out to James Jamerson for killing the bass on every fucking song. He's a legend. I can't believe I didn't know his name. That's a cool name. Well, you're never going to forget it now. Yeah, right? it's also, yeah, it's a dope name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the name, like, if you were making up a bass player. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. What would you call him? I, it sounds like it's Ozzy Osbourne's bassist, James Jamerson. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he, he could play in any band, I swear to God. But <laughs> Oh, that brings me up uh, something. Um, you know, I, thought, I think it was crazy listening to this album because this time period must have just been so fucked up because we touched on it. And it seems like every artist in this period is talking about the same shit, just, you know, expressing it in different ways. You know, right. um, like I've said in the, the video, I don't remember what song it was, um, some of the lyrics look like something that Black Sabbath like, right? Yeah. It's like about radiation in the sky and yeah. like all this kind of shit. And I just think it's crazy how it was such a, I think you said a collective consciousness at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. everybody's like, this is all fucked up. Like we gotta talk about it. It's just in different ways. Like Marvin seems a little more hopeful in yeah. his voice. Yeah. Or you know, like Black Sabbath is like, fuck it, let's just embrace the darkness. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're talking about sending poor people to war, they're talking about all this shit. It's all the same thing, you yeah, know? For sure. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, it's definitely like a, a heavy time period and um, really thought-provoking album. Um, makes you think about his death, like, too, like his own death, you know what I mean? It makes you ask so many questions. So, like, I mean, the album is a big question, and we have a big question, like, as to, like, how he died, why he died, like, what, the, what in the world? But, yeah, it's a pretty tragic situation. I don't know if everybody knows about it, but pretty much everybody really knows that, you know, he was killed by his own dad, so it's pretty sad. Yeah. Overall, I mean, it's, it is kind of sad listening to the album now, knowing that, you know, if he was still around, he'd probably be pretty upset with the way that things are in yeah. 2020 in the world. Yeah. Um, but I think it's beautiful that he made this album to try to just kind of bring everybody together. I mean, he, like we were saying, um, like the recurring line about like they want to judge us because our hair is long. It's like he clearly wasn't writing that about himself because you can look at him right there. He doesn't have long hair. Right. <laughs> so it's like it right. seemed like he wanted everybody to like understand what he was saying and kind right. of be unified yeah. in that way. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's beautiful. Yeah, me too. Me too, definitely. Um, yeah, and it's, it's all all pretty sad. But I mean, we love Marvin Gaye. He's definitely, definitely one of the music angels now. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, influence in mass consciousness still. Shout out to him and his legacy. 
Oh, oh yeah, he had a daughter that sang. She was beautiful. I forgot about that. No, no, oh. I, just, I just looked in his face and I saw her face in a flash, and I was like, That's oh shoot, no, okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, shout out to Marvin for just leaving this legacy of amazing music. Um, we are Side After Dark. Yes, we are. Thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, we got more album reactions coming at you soon. Peace, y'all.